Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, we've all been there. A classroom that was less than stimulating. Bueller. 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 Today, our focus is on an educational movement trying to turn the boring lecture on its head and inspire a new generation to create and innovate. It gives people a platform to collaborate and share and uh, it makes the world a bit of a richer place. We'll hear from one of the leaders of the maker movement, Mark Hatch. What's really powerful about this is that new reality is another industrial revolution, or what I like to call the creative revolution. And we'll show you how you can get involved whether they're in the sixth grade or whether it's someone coming back to work on their post-secondary education. Career and technology education provides students with the hands-on learning experience to be a part of the economic engine for our state. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by Career Tech, a job for every Oklahoman and a workforce for every company. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. I'm Rob McClendon. Well, a revolution is underway and you may be a part of it and not even know it. Today, we're talking about the maker movement, a broad term that covers everyone from the neighbor next door tinkering in the garage to all those crafty folks on Pinterest. And it's more than just a hobby. Across our country, millions of Americans are using both their hands and their heads to create a new maker economy worth almost $30 billion. Today, we're going to meet one driver of the maker movement, Mark Hatch. But before we do, here's some background with our Blaine Singletary. With computer chips, lasers, and 3D printers, this looks like the inside of a high-tech manufacturing firm. But it's actually a classroom, a maker classroom. They're working on a greenhouse that's solar powered that will it's regulate its own temperature and alert you to when it needs to be watered. That's Amy Haskins, a teacher at Rush Springs High School, and that state-of-the-art greenhouse is just one of many things her students and others are making in this space at Canadian Valley Tech Center. We built the greenhouse and we have some of the circuitry in place. We're almost to the end part where we just have a few tweaks left to put, to get, put everything together. And what this group of young makers is doing in this classroom in Oklahoma is only one part of a bigger, worldwide maker movement. Scott Charlson heads the You Learn Academy out of CV Tech, and he told us just how amazing this movement is inside and out of school. Because if you're not familiar with the maker movement, these are people who are innovating in their garages, inventing different things. You might see anything from a computer that would let you know when your milk needs replaced in the refrigerator. It might be a robot that does something for someone. It might be a, an Arduino controlled home surveillance or security system. In a way, the maker movement could be seen as the driving force behind a number of successful tech startups. While its roots can be traced back as far as the 1970s, maker culture spread like wildfire in the 2000s as social media began to bring people with similar ideas together in areas such as robotics, electronics, as well as woodworking, metalworking, arts, and crafts. Today, so-called maker spaces are popping up in major cities. For a monthly fee, these facilities have all the latest creative gadgets and offer the training to use them, so their members can create the next big thing. In a way, these maker spaces go the way of those famous garages that launch so many of today's top companies. You think of Bill Gates, uh, Steve Jobs, so many other CEOs started projects in their garages and uh, kind of bypass traditional pathways to success. And I think what the maker movement does is emphasizes that that potential is within anyone, anyone that has a dream. 
and the Maker Movement aims not only to cultivate the ideas of the fresh out of college tech professional, but also these young minds in high school and grade school. You know, the kids are trying to find their passion. What do they want to do? Trying to find where they want to go in life. Jody Maxey is a sixth grade teacher at Tuttle Middle School. She says using the Maker Movement in the classroom has benefits beyond it. Her students designed and constructed a special lunch tray for one of their handicapped classmates. As the kids were designing this tray and testing it out, the other kids at lunch were like, what are they doing? What are they doing? And, and they were intrigued about what was going on. And so they kind of saw the steps from start to finish as well. And once the final project was finished, all the kids were like, wow, you know, that is so cool. And it, and it, it made the three kids that designed the tray, they all told me, God, it just makes you feel good to do something for somebody else. And at the end of the day, that's what the maker movement is all about, using technology to enrich the lives of others. New creations are brought into existence and makers of all ages learn along the way. Again, Amy Haskins. Just, you know, engaging the student is so important and if they're already engaged in, with that curiosity, then, then it's so much easier to reach them. And Scott Charlson says some of these engaging ideas are too good to go to waste. It gives people a platform to collaborate and share and uh, it makes the world a bit of a richer place. Thank you, Blaine. Now, when we return, you'll meet Mark Hatch, author of the Maker Movement Manifesto and CEO of Tech Shop. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon with Rob McClendon. Weekly insight into your changing world. Well, in many ways, the Maker Movement has democratized innovation. Thanks to new maker spaces popping up around the country, it's gotten much easier for most anyone to take an idea and turn it into reality with the right motivation. In fact, our next guest says entrepreneurs can cut their development costs by 98% through the use of a shared space platform like his tech shops popping up around the country. Mark Hatch is the CEO of Tech Shop and the author of the Maker Movement Manifesto and was the headliner at this year's Oklahoma Business Roundtable. So Mark, you called the maker movement a revolution. What's enabled it to happen? Well, it's primarily being driven by uh, easy to use, uh, low cost, very powerful machines. And so what that means um, for an average maker is the cost to produce that first unit has come down by 98% in the last decade. And the um, ease of use of the tools are such that with just a little bit of dedication they can now actually learn how to use the tools themselves. And that is anytime you take a, an economic good and you reduce the cost by almost two orders of magnitude, you are now operating in a new reality. What's really powerful about this is that new reality is another industrial revolution or what I like to call the creative revolution. This is the laser cutter. Um, I'm from San Francisco. We call this the gateway drug. So if you're going to be a pusher, you want to do something, you want to give somebody a taste of something that's powerful, incredibly easy to use, and cheap. That's this tool. We routinely see people take this $75 class and launch businesses in weeks. Not months, not years, in weeks. This is an incredibly useful and powerful tool. This is one of my favorite ones. This is a water jet. This thing cuts through five inches thick of anything on the planet. Concrete, granite, titanium, cows, pigs, dogs, birthday cakes, you name it, it cuts right through it. We teach you how to use this tool in three hours. Complete woodworking shop. We often get excited about the metal working because you haven't had access to it, but a lot, we have ripped out the woodworking shops out of most of the high schools and junior highs across the U.S at exactly the wrong time in human history when we're adding computers to it and making it easy to use. We have people that learn how to use the, the CNC shop bot that launch companies that are now worth tens of millions of dollars after just learning three or four of these kind of basic tools. You have the cool machines in the tech shop. Sure. Yeah. But you also have cool people there. Well, that's actually the magic. So um, I like to say that we have the machines there as the honey to attract uh, the bees. 
Um, and so, yeah, you need access to the tools. But just as importantly, or more importantly, you need access to the knowledge base that's embedded in every major city so that you're closer to the solution set that you need to make your product, your dream, come true. So we have what we call dream consultants. And their job is to understand who is in the building at the moment. And they're there you know, 40 hours a week, five days, and so forth. So they know what the community is capable of. So if you run into a problem and say, I'm not sure exactly how to do this, we go, well, Bob does, and Jane does, and Jill does. Let me introduce you to them. So we don't, we don't rely on accidental interactions. We actually intervene and get you to the knowledge that's already embedded in the community to be able to move your project forward. And that's the magic. When you can engage the creative community in Oklahoma City, in St. Louis, in, in Brooklyn, in San Francisco, and get them meeting and interacting with one another at the levels where they're having issues and problems, Again, it's another revolution that happens because you're connecting, it's like a superconductor for creatives. But what we're actually doing at the core, we get distracted by the tools because they're kind of sexy and they're kind of fun. But that, isn't, that is not what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do is to attract a core group in the community that is passionate about making things. And the real key is to get about 500 to 800 members in one community who are showing up three to five times a month with their instructors and other folks that are hanging out. And what happens is it, the spaces move from a place that people have to go to get their work done to a place they want to, do, want to go to to get their work done. And magic happens. In San Francisco, we have professors from Stanford and Berkeley. We have professionals from Method, which is a big design firm, Frog Design. We have designers from Levi's, from Macy's. We have students from the, from the uh, local art school. We have kids as young as 14 years old up there using laser cutters. We'll have 30 to 50 people any given night bouncing off one another and helping one another achieve their dreams. That's our tagline, build your dreams here. The objective is to build the community. The tools are the honey that attracts the hive. But once you've got one of these spaces in a major city, watch out. So you, you have the, the cool machines, you have the cool people, someone comes at you with a great idea, now where do you get the investment? Well, see, this is, again, something that's happened in the last decade. Um, a couple of big changes have occurred. The first, of course, is crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. So Kickstarter and Indiegogo are now the, uh, the best on-ramp for being able to take your crazy idea, at least that's what an angel group might look at it, like if you're a 24-year-old kid trying to launch a lamp company, most angel teams wouldn't invest in it but a Kickstarter campaign raised $480,000 for that idea, which enabled him to quit his job, hire the people needed, reduce the item to um, a, actually a product that he's now selling millions of dollars with. Again, 10 years ago, somebody like that didn't have access to the tools and didn't have access to the community and didn't have access to the financing. Now they do. And then a little more technically, the Jobs Act is lowering the threshold to be able, the Jobs Act that was passed by Congress mm -hmm. um, two years ago, and the SEC is now kind of chunking through and, and making it legal. So you can now tell investors publicly, you can actually advertise that you're raising money to, to launch your company, which by the way, three years ago was illegal. Like for the last 80 years, if you had a revolutionary idea, but you didn't have access to friends and family that had capital, you couldn't get it launched. Now you can. So the whole economic layer has also changed, which is, again, why this is truly a revolution. Tools are easy to use. They're cheap. You've got access to capital. You've got access to knowledge. Really, the only thing that's holding you back is your desire. This is what happens when you give the creative class access to the tools of the Industrial Revolution. They come in and build the world's fastest electric motorcycle from the ground up. They didn't have access. They, could, they would cost them a quarter million, a half million, maybe a million dollars to build it. They did it for under $50,000. They came in and they used every one of our tools to be able to build the thing. It's, it's amazing. It did 218 miles an hour on the Bonneville Salt Flats. This thing was so good, it won Pikes Peak this last year. And not only did it beat all the electric motorcycles, it destroyed the entire field. When was the last time you saw a professional race and the second place finisher came across the line 20 seconds later. Britt Moran is a, uh, she's like the Silicon Valley version of Martha Stewart. She came in, uh, learned how to use all the tools, launched a crafting company targeted at women. She's now on the Today Show like, like twice a month, three times uh, a month, learned everything that she needed. She just raised, I mean, look at her, she's like, what, 28? 28 million dollars in her Series B. 
Who says you need to be a Facebook app to be able to engage people and make money and create jobs? I certainly don't. This is David Lang. He came in and came up to me the very first day he was on site. He says, Mark, I don't know how to make anything. He says, well, that's not true. I'm really good with PowerPoint. I'm sorry. PowerPoint is not making something. Um, PowerPoint's entertaining, and you might convince some people something. So he came in and said, I'm going to become a Maker Pro. I've been to the Maker Fair, and I want to become a Maker Pro. I'm going to take all of your classes, which he did, like 35 classes. Nine months later, he launched an underwater robot company. He picked up the skills that he needed, attracted the community of people around him to launch the largest open access, remotely operated vehicle company on the planet. He sold over 1,500 of these. He's doing millions of dollars in sales, and he picked up the skills that he needed to do that in nine months. He developed the network that he needed to be able to take it and get a Kickstarter campaign in about four months. We are living in a completely different world than we ever have. We have access to the tools, community, and knowledge to make all kinds of things. So this is another one of my favorites. Max came in. One of the other parts of the ecosystem that's come along is, this, is Kickstarter and Indiegogo. I actually think that to get out of some programs, we should require the kids to try to launch an Indiegogo or a, or a Kickstarter campaign. So I ran into Max. And um, I asked him, you know, what are you doing? It's like, well, I'm trying to build this lamp. It's like, cool, what's your strategy? It's like, well, I'm going to raise $60,000 on Kickstarter to launch my company. I was like, Max, $60,000? This is about three years ago. $60,000 would put you in the top 10% of all projects ever launched on Kickstarter. Like, can't you do it for five grand or 10 grand? He's like, no, and he showed me his Gantt chart and he'd done all his homework. It's going to be 60 grand. I said, okay, Max, do a really good video. Uh, because it's going to be really hard. He raised $480,000. He quit his job, hired five people, and created a manufacturing uh, facility to be able to do this. He was on Shark Tank last year. All five sharks competed for his business. This kid is about 24 years old. He's never owned a company his entire life. He's never launched a company. He has no absolute business or right to launch a, a, a lamp company. No angel group on the planet would have funded this kid, but yet Kickstarter did, and he proved all of us naysayers wrong. He's got a multi-million dollar business. He's got a shark as one of his investors, and he's now he's getting distributed all over. It's very exciting. So the maker movement is making millionaires. It is. Is it making our economy different? Uh, actually, quite tangibly in a very specific way. So Square, the, um, you know, the little white uh, dongle that goes on Something the end, we see and all the time. came out of our uh, mid-peninsula location. Uh, James uh, McKelvey and Jack Dorsey came up with it. And you, you'd think, well, how did that have an impact on the economy? They estimated in August of 2012, companies that were starting to use that device had to hire 35,000 new employees. I believe that the, the money supply the velocity of the money supply increased because of that little device that was created by a, a former glass blower out of St. Louis. This is what happens when you can give people access to these kinds of tools. So what happens is we've discovered cities, companies, and educators love this. It helps to catalyze innovation districts. It increases innovation and employee engagement. It improves educational outcomes. Access to tools is absolutely everything. So where do we go from here? Where do you go from here? Well, you know, my objective is to try to get maker spaces in every major city, whether they're tech shops or somebody else's, I don't care. Our mission is to help drive global innovation by engaging, enabling, and empowering people to build their dreams. And we're operating in an entirely new environment. The thing that's holding us back is the lack of maker spaces across the U.S. and around the world. Mark Hatch, it was a pleasure. <laughs> it's my pleasure, Rob. Thanks. Thank you. Now I have Mark Hatch's entire talk to Oklahoma's Business Roundtable streaming on our website, and I think it's one you're going to enjoy. To see that, just head over to okhorizon.com and look under our value added section. Horizon is at your fingertips. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to catch the segments you may have missed and our latest new content as it happens. Well, while the maker movement is fueling a new generation of entrepreneurs and innovators, the value of skilled labor is nothing new. For generations, Oklahoma Career Tech has been getting students to use their hands as well as their heads. I just really like actually being able to delve into it instead of just reading about it. I mean, it's a lot different when you actually have to do it compared to just 
getting the information out of text. It really is. Career Tech students line the hallways of the roundtable event, demonstrating just some of the technology they work with on a daily basis. We have a UAV and our UGV behind me. I'm learning lots of transferable skills that I'll be able to use in my future. I like learning hands-on because it's more understandable and it's something physical that's there that you can actually work and build on and use to reinforce your ideas about what you've learned in class inside the book and without using actual physical objects. I hope this information has been helpful. If you still have questions, please check with one of my human friends here. They are really cool. Well, ultimately, CareerTech's goal is to improve Oklahoma's economy by providing individuals with the training and skills necessary to be successful in the workplace, while also providing companies the workforce necessary to compete globally, which makes Oklahoma CareerTech the original makerspace. In Oklahoma, when someone talks about the maker movement, I automatically think of hands-on learning. You see classrooms where students utilize their hands, their critical thinking skills, and put those together to be productive in today's workforce. The maker movement is the democratization of learning. It's really about empowering people. Just because we've been doing school the same way for so long does not mean that we have to keep doing it that way, especially now that we have so much cool technology and tools and options. We can really offer kids the best learning experience that we've ever been able to in all of the history of mankind. You don't just show up to work with a high school degree and you can get a job. Today, even in manufacturing, it's so high tech. Our goal is to work with our businesses and our industries to make sure that we're providing the right type of educational attainment and skills that they need to meet the needs of today's workforce and certainly look out to the future. We get the opportunity to work with students from the grades 6 through 12. Students get to experience various industries, various career paths. What we're doing in ULEARN Academy is that whole notion of kids coming to a space and they do stuff. Look at what we used to do in schools. Every school had shop. Makerspace is nothing more than a shop on steroids with cool electronics and microprocessors. The ULEARN Academy has made a world of difference for these students. They are actually learning things in the classroom that we would never be able to do in a regular school day. They're learning coding, they're learning putting circuits together, they're learning power tools. When we start actually interacting with things with our hands, our whole self, it's a way of connecting something tangible to some of the higher concepts that we know that kids need to learn. Well, I've been in ULEARN for about a year and I've learned a lot about programming and I've learned how to put computer hardware together. I saw they had all these 3D printers and laser engravers and I just started freaking out because I just really wanted to do something with those and now I could. Jake has always had an interest in it. He always had a sort of a little spark in him. What's so wonderful about a program like you learn is it's really sparking that fire in them early on. He's just on fire for it now. With my tablet that I'm making, I'm going to be 3D printing a case for it, and I could just do pretty much anything a computer could do on this thing. Career Tech, they are the original makerspace, really and truly. They're the ones who have been doing project-based learning and making it work consistently for years. If you walk into a career and technology education classroom, you see students providing creative solutions, utilizing their critical thinking. We get high school students, we have adult students, and we have students from industry that need additional training. We will teach them how to work a variety of manual mills and lathes, as well as CNC equipment. We'll teach them how to do CAD programming. The ultimate goal is to become the best machinist that can be. You can never really stop learning in machining, there are always new ways to do things, always new ideas. I do well by hands-on experiencing and learning. This place definitely does teach me what I need to learn. One of the biggest challenges for us in this part of the country is attracting skilled labor. We have a highly automated manufacturing environment out there. It takes operators who have good technical skills and able to interface with machinery. We've really taken the approach that we want to invest in, in our existing labor and the labor force here and to be able to train and develop those folks that we find locally. But we need those technical courses that Francis Tuttle and Career Tech help with to be able to build those programs. Everyone is a maker. I haven't met anyone yet that is not a maker. 
You know, we always are learning, and the best learning is getting your hands in there, accessing your resources, figuring it out. Whether they're in the sixth grade or whether it's someone coming back to work on their post-secondary education, career and technology education provides students with the hands-on learning experience to be a part of the economic engine for our state. Now, we do have much more on the Maker Movement on our website. Just head over to OKRising.com and click on our Value Added section. Want to see more stories like this? All our segments are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we start a new school year and look at the challenges facing new teachers. My dad, actually, he says, always says, I'm paying more for you to go to school than you're ever going to make. Are you sure this is what you want to do? You know, I just don't think this is the best idea. Education and our economy on Oklahoma Show for the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Thanks for including us as part of your day. I'm Rob McClendon. Hope to see you back here next week. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry.